Hey guys, welcome back to another What's For Dinner video. I have got some easy but delicious weeknight meals for you guys. I really hope you enjoy it. I wanted to hop on and do a little intro. I wanted to say that this video is in dedication to Jan Creason. Y'all, I have recently found her through YouTube because she gave me the sweetest shout out on YouTube in a recent video. I had never heard of her before. I had never seen her channel before. I had no clue. But I had a few new subscribers that had come over to my channel and was commenting that they came over from her channel. So of course, I had to go see who this lady was because I had no clue. I had never heard of her before. So I went over, checked her channel out. I'll have her channel linked down below for you guys. But y'all, she gave me the sweetest shout out on YouTube on one of her recent videos. I was, I, it made my day. I, it was so sweet. She talked about Winston. She talked about me. And it just really warmed my heart that uh, she's been subscribed for a while now. Um, and she has a very large channel. It was just so sweet that she took the time and gave me a shout out on one of her videos. Um, it truly made my day. So today's video is dedicated to her. I have gained um, a few hundred, oh, that will be the understatement. I have gained almost 500 new subscribers because of her. She has helped me, helped me reach towards my goal um, of 10K by July. Because of her, she has helped me get closer and closer to that goal that I have. Um, and it's just amazing the people that, um, the friendships and the bonds and stuff that you build through YouTube. Like I said, I had no clue who she was, um, but she was sweet enough to give me a shout out, um, on YouTube and it was just crazy. I, <laughs> I, um, I went over there, watched her channel and um, watched a few videos, commented and I just couldn't believe it. So thank you so much. I'm sure you're watching this video right now. Thank you so much for the shout out. You have no clue how much that means to me, how much that means to my family, my channel. It's amazing. You are the sweetest lady ever. So thank you so much. So let's go ahead and get started. And I hope you guys enjoy this What's For Dinner video. So we are going to start off with the good old brown sugar chili chicken. It is so good, y'all. Y'all already know. Many of you have already actually tried this recipe and have come back and said that it's really good. And I totally agree with you. I have this recipe typed out, so I'll have it linked down below for you guys so you can get exact measurements and exactly how to do it. It's super simple. I just take a pack of chicken tenders. I take the tendon out. If you want to know how to take the tendon out, I will have that video listed down below. It's super simple. Um, but you're just gonna take each tender and wrap it in a piece of bacon. I like to use the thin cut bacon because one, it's gonna get nice and crispy. Um, I, that, I don't use thick cut because it's too thick and the amount of time that it's in the oven, it's not gonna get super crispy. So I always use the thin cut, and then I'm just gonna wrap each piece up in the bacon. Once you get your tenders wrapped, then you're just gonna take a mixture of brown sugar and chili powder. Like I said, I'll have the measurements and everything linked down below for you guys. But you're just gonna mix that together in a separate little bowl there, and then you're going to 
coat each chicken tender in the brown sugar and chili powder mixture and then you're just going to put it on a baking sheet make sure you have a baking sheet with um, a, a little like lip on it because it's going to make syrup of course with the sugar it's going to make a nice syrup so you want to make sure that that doesn't just fall all over all in your oven so make sure you have a bacon pan with a lip around it so it will stay in so you're just going to coat each piece put it on a baking rack and then you're just going to bake this at 350 for about 25 to 30 minutes you just want to make sure that your chicken reaches the internal temperature of 165. So to go along with the chicken that night, I've got out one of the baked mac and cheese. Y'all, the last video I made this, I said I was going to freeze it and it didn't make it in the freezer. We totally ate this thing. It was so good. <laughs> I don't know why I ever thought I was going to actually get to freeze one of the mac and cheeses because I should have known better. We were just going to eat it. Um, so I just put the breading on top of that. I just mix, um, normally I mix the crackers with the butter. Um, but I was in a hurry, so I just threw it on there. But I have this recipe typed out as well, so I'll have it linked down below so y'all can get all the measurements and all that stuff. It is so good. I absolutely love this brown sugar chili chicken. It is delicious. And this baked mac and cheese was the perfect side. Next was French onion burgers. Y'all, this was so good. I will definitely be making this again. I have a whole separate recipe on this. This was part of my crock pot video last week. And so I'll have it linked down below. You do not wanna miss this recipe. This next meal was actually inspired by Budget Bethany. I've watched her channel a while now, and y'all, she is a good down-home southern cooking girl. I'm telling you, if you love some down-home southern cooking food, definitely go check out her channel. I'll have it linked down below. You do not want to miss that. That girl knows how to cook some country cooking. So I totally got the inspiration for this um, from her. So I just got, I had a pork loin there and I just cut it up into chops. And then I like to season my chops and my flour mixture. I just, I've always done that. I've seasoned both. I was always taught season each step. So I've always done that. So after I get these uh, cut up, I'm going to season the chops themselves with salt, pepper, and some garlic powder. And then we will get our flour mixture ready. And then a little bowl or container, I just add in about one cup of flour. 
and then I just season with my heart here I've always done this I've got some seasoned salt I have got some pepper some paprika some onion powder some garlic powder just totally do what you want but like I said I've always seasoned both I've always seasoned my breading and I've always seasoned my chops itself that's just how I've always done it but you can do it the way you want to um, and then I also have my pan of oil heating up as I'm getting all this prep together So for our sides, we are going to be um, making some whole potatoes. I just season these up, um, but I just drain the juice off. That's two cans that I put in there, put some butter in there. And then I like to kind of chop those up. Um, you can use a knife, but I just get out my kitchen uh, scissors and just kind of chop them up smaller. And then, like I said, I just put some butter in there and then I put some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And then I just let them kind of fry up and they get a little crispy and they're super delicious. And then we are also going to have some peas and I always just add some sugar and butter to our peas. And then we're going to do a box of the Kraft mac and cheese. Y'all know the cauliflower one is our favorite. So I always test my oil to see if it's done and all I do is I just take a back of a wooden spoon, put it in the oil and then if it starts bubbling around the wooden handle, then you know that it is nice and hot and ready. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take each chop, bread it in that seasoned flour and then I will pop it in the oil. So of course, I highly recommend a food thermometer. I always have one linked under favorites. Y'all know how much we use food thermometers in this house. I always check my food. Um, and so for pork, it needs to be internal temperature of 145 for it to be nice and done. And y'all, these were so good. They were nice and crispy. This batch was a little overcooked, but the next batch, um, I just kept a closer eye on. But that's the good thing about having a food thermometer is because you can keep an eye on it and you know actually what temperatures your food are. If you don't have a food thermometer and you always say, oh, my food's so dry, it's overcooked, get you one because you know exactly, like say you check it halfway through, you kind of know it gives you a guide of when you should pull it, how much longer it has. I'm telling y'all, I highly recommend a food thermometer for any home cook, any kitchen. And to go along with dinner, I just cooked us up some of the air fryer crescents. Y'all, I love doing crescents in the air fryer. They are so delicious. I have a whole separate video on this as well, so I'll have it linked down below. But y'all, this was so good. The pork chops were so crispy and so everything was just so good. This was a nice southern comfort meal.
We're making cheesy spaghetti. Mm. Mr. Two Hats. <laughs> I got my helper in the kitchen and he's helping me make dinner tonight. And we are making some cheesy spaghetti. I've made this before. Um, this is actually something that Luke grew up on. Um, his mom would make this. And so, um, actually when we first got together, uh, and I went over to his house one time when we were, um, you know, dating in high school, she made this and it was so good. And it's so simple and it, all it is is Velveeta and spaghetti sauce. That's it. But it is so good. So I have some extra, um, Velveeta here where, um, not the real brand, the Kroger brand. I have some extra where, um, I did the baked macaroni over the weekend. And so I'm going to take use it. And then I've got the um, tomato, basil, and garlic. This is the Walmart one. The Aldi one's also just as good, the tomato, basil, garlic. And so we're cooking up the ground beef. Got our water going for the noodles. Our oven is on because I'm gonna make these Parmesan garlic herb scones to go with this. I got this at kind of like a, um, kind of reminded me of like a TJ Maxx. You know how they always have like the fancy little mixes and different pastas and stuff like that. Um, so I got that at one of those type stores. So this sounded so good. So it only calls for water and just the herb mix. You mix it together, bake it in the oven. So hopefully it'll be yummy. So now we're just gonna add in our Velveeta. Um, Y'all know I love the Velveeta sauce packets also, so you can add those, a couple of those in. But since I already had this, I'm just gonna use this up. And you can add as little or as much as you want. You're just making a nice cheesy um, spaghetti sauce. So I thought I would share my little trick for um, if the noodles get done before everything else like this is still melting and it's not ready yet and the biscuits in the oven aren't done yet. So if you're worried about your pasta sticking, like when you drain it and it's sitting, I wouldn't recommend leaving it in the water because that's just gonna, your noodles are gonna continue to cook. So they'll get overdone and they'll be mushy. But if you drain them and you toss them in a little bit of um, spaghetti sauce, then that gives them a nice little coating and you don't have to add a lot, just a little bit to help um, you know, coat the noodles where they're not gonna stick together. And I also don't recommend putting oil in with your noodles. Cause if you put oil in with your noodles, then whatever sauce you're using is not gonna stick to the noodles. That, that's my little noodle recommendation there. So that's what I do. Um, just uh, if I get done early, then I do it that way. And here is my plate. We just topped it with some sprinkle parm. And like I said, those biscuits were a no-go. They were sweet and not garlicky at all. Luke just said to stick with my homemade and I can definitely do that. I hope you guys enjoyed this What's For Dinner video. I hope it gave you some meal inspiration to cook more for your family at home. If you try any of these recipes, please let me know in the comments down below and I hope you'll have a fabulous week. Bye guys.